we have let the genie out of the bottle and it's going to be impossible to put it back in. He's talking about the remote work revolution. We know the COVID-19 pandemic catapulted us into this work from home world. It sure did. WRTV's Lauren Casey digs deeper into remote work post pandemic. They want a community in the trades district. Workers gather where Madison Street and Maker Way come to a T. The mill is 19,000 square feet of co-working and incubator space. It's here in downtown Bloomington. Inside this historic building that got a facelift for the future of remote work. So when we renovated, there was no infrastructure, no electricity, no internet, no sewage, no water, no nothing. But since 2018, the mill in Bloomington houses a variety of desks, office spaces, a kitchenette, conference rooms, and people working remote. Pat East, the executive director of the mill, says it's an anchor for entrepreneurs, breaks down barriers for startups, and provides separation and space for folks who work from home. William Mundorf. I work for a fintech based in San Francisco. William Mundorf became a member at the mill a few months ago, and a relationship brought him to Bloomington. Uh, the opportunity to live with her, but also still have a more normal work environment, and the mill has been able to offer that. Mundorf says the mill is everything he could want in a co-working space away from home. I have a short commute, but even that is enough to sort of separate my work and life. He says his generation of workers want the flexibility, and a Ball State economist is tracking that trend of recent college grads. The new jobs that are coming on board are disproportionately remote work, so we know from graduates from college last spring as much as 50 percent took jobs that were either uh, partially or fully remote. Economist Michael Hicks says pre-pandemic we saw three to four percent of workers in America working remote. The pandemic pushed more people home with anywhere from a third to a half of workers either fully remote or hybrid. And now post-pandemic as many workers head back to the office, a large number, nearly 20 to 25 percent, remain at home in some way. So that's just changing the landscape of the geography of work. Hick says this could be a big opportunity for Indiana to attract remote workers. He says they typically value education and things to do. With those assets in place, cities could cash in. For communities that don't have really world-class schools, a lot, you know, amenities, housing assets, all those sorts of things, you still have time to get into that game, but you better hurry up, otherwise you're going to be left behind. And cities like Bloomington already have a horse in this race. We wanted to reboot and reset our economy and bring Bloomington into the new economy. East says the mill partnered with the organization Make My Move to launch the site Bloomington Remote. It's an advertisement targeting workers in the market to move, showcasing what B-Town is all about. But really finding your place in the world and finding people that you connect with is important. Working for you, Lauren Casey, WRTV. Well, so far through Bloomington Remote, they've recruited remote workers from across the country and the world who choose to work and play in Monroe County. And here's something that's interesting. Hicks estimates that in as little as 18 years, 50% of jobs will be fully or partially remote. I believe it. You it's did it the for trend. a while during yeah, the pandemic. Exactly. A lot You're of back. our coworkers did. Right. So.